Welcome, I'm John Caldera, president of the Independence Institute and your devil's advocate. Later, Joey Bunch from the Denver Post talks about all the different surveys and polls that, well, certain groups do. You want to stay for that. But first, from CompleteColorado.com, Colorado's investigative journalist, Todd Shepard. Glad to have you. Glad to be here, John. All right. I want to talk to you. I want to talk to you sure. about the Department of Insurance. Right. Because this is one of those stories that Complete has done so well, but is not getting any traction. This, this has happened in a few places. In short, here it is, the punchline is this. Our governor has broken the law and nobody cares. That, that's a pretty big story. Right, I, and I agree, and, and really this does boil down to nothing more than a rule of law question because this particular story, as we'll go through here in the next couple of minutes, but the main thing to understand is, is there was no political party that really felt wronged by this, and because the Republicans got something they wanted and the Democrats got something they wanted, everybody just sort of washed their hands and said, well, we'll just look the other way. It's and a, it's, I'm kind of amazed at it, really. This is, this is, this is you know, no harm, no foul, exactly, break right. the law. And kind of in the same way uh, that the president has broken the Obamacare laws, but, you know, what will come of that? He doesn't have the power to give grant extensions here and say, you don't have to pay your fee here. You know, the law is the law. Let's bring it, and there's an Obamacare connection. Very give, much me, so. give, give me the big picture first. Okay, the main thing is, is when Obamacare was signed into law, it first said, all insurance plans have to meet these criteria, like say it added mental health benefits and some other things. And these were called the key requirements or the essential benefits. And any uh, plan that didn't meet all of those benefits, they were called non-ACA, the Affordable Care Act, non-ACA compliance. So they didn't, and some of they those- They didn't meet it. They didn't meet it. And some of those because of renewals maybe that uh, were allowed in some, in some states or renewals that were allowed by the feds, that they may have renewed into that first year 2014. But take it back to 2013, if you remember, November 2013, it's not an election year, but there's just this wave, and I mean an embarrassing wave of health care cancellations. And that's because... This was back when they said, if you like your health care plan, you can keep your health care plan. If you like your doctor, you can keep your doctor. We found out that ain't so, and the cancellations came pouring in. I mean, it, it was an astonishing wave, and it was about October of 2013 that it was first reported in the Colorado media that it was about 250,000 250, insurance uh, policy cancellations in Colorado alone, most of which were likely due to Obamacare. Now, uh, give that statistic again, because I mean, that's just a huge number. It is. 230,000, roughly, yeah. uh, insurance policies are canceled because they're not compliant with Obamacare. Now, keep in mind what, what the left was arguing at the, same, at the time was, well, your policy's almost identically the same. All we've done is added these essential benefits, which just make it a better policy. But it's still not the same policy, and that's why insurance right. carriers had to say, we're canceling. Right. We're canceling, we're canceling and here's what we'll offer you that's as close as to what we gave you before, but it now meets the essential requirements. And it costs more. It costs more, and it's, AC, it's what you'd call ACA compliant. Right. Now, in 2013, though, earlier in the year, the General Assembly, and you see this all the time when the feds pass a very sweeping legislation like this that gets into the states. The, the state of Colorado, the General Assembly, basically wrote a law that says, we're just gonna tidy up little portions of Colorado law and make it, we're going to align it with the feds, right? These are, and they're right. called alignment bills, you expect it, right? Uh, and it's, in general, it's just sort of a housekeeping measure. You're just trying to make sure that all of their criteria are in and that there are no conflicting provisions. And so, so I mean, basically, Obama passes this huge law change. The state has to uh, play with our laws to make sure that they, they mesh. Right, right but here's it. the key is in that alignment bill, there was a provision that said starting January 1st, 2014, every policy renewed, keep that in mind, renewed, renewed or sold, has to be ACA compliant. It has to comply with all provisions of Obamacare. And so, first of all, in November 2013, the president said, we're going to allow some extensions to some of these plans. And That's a great impression, uh, by the I'm way. I'm working on it, yeah. it'll get better. For so some reason, he sounds like Don Adams, <laughs> I don't know why. <laughs> and. Uh, so the, the Division of Insurance said no at the time. 
And in fact, they said, you know what, we could, this, remember, we're talking November 2013, Division of Insurance said, we couldn't even do this if we wanted to because we passed this state law and it said, uh, starting January 1st, 2014, all, all of these plans have to be let, compliant. Let, let, me, let me kick this back, see if I'm following this. So the state legislature changes a law saying all, all these um, uh, insurance policies, whether it's renewed or it's new, has to, has to do this. But before that, the president says, yeah, what we're doing with our law, you don't have to do it for a year. And the question is, legally, does the state of Colorado have to follow the law that the state passed? It's not to do with the feds, but they said you cannot renew these things. You can't, there's no, there's no way to give you the grace period just because the feds said you have a grace period. You're breaking state law. Exactly. How did you find this out? Well, I mean, it was, first of all, this is, this is exactly what the Division of Insurance argued the first time. That's the problem, it, John, is it, they put it out there themselves in November of 2013. But you've got to remember, the president did this a second time. He comes back in March of 2014 and he says, we're going to allow two more years of these plans to be sold. That's better. That was a better uh, thank one. You. Thank you. So, and at this time, this is where it gets very tricky because where the Division of Insurance previously had said, oh, we couldn't sell those plans even if we wanted to because we passed that alignment bill that said every plan has to be ACA compliant. Well, now here comes March. Corey Gardner's in the race by this time. Mark Udall's feeling more heat over you know, his Obamacare vote. And so now, uh, the, look, let me read to you exactly what Commissioner Salazar says. She says, whoa, 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 whoa. where did you get this little piece of right. paper? These emails, uh, I, I placed a, a Colorado Open Records Act request with the Division of Insurance. This was May of last year. These were emails that they denied to me using the deliberative process privilege. I sued them in August of last year, and three week, two, three weeks ago, we settled, and I would drop the lawsuit if they would give me the emails, done deal. You, you made that sound like it's no big deal. Let me, let, me, <laughs> let, me, let me back up here and say what a big deal this is. You know, whatever you feel on, on the topic of Obamacare, whether or not Hick broke the law, didn't break the law, you as a journalist said, we have an open records law here, these are emails, give me the emails. They said no. And so the transparency wasn't, wasn't there. The law says you must give them to me. And so you decided, no, I will take you to court and get them. Now, people don't usually take the government to court, at which point the Department of Insurance said, well, here's, here's most of what you want. You dropped the suit because you got what you needed. Right. And to, to their credit, they argued the deliberative process privilege, which is a privilege that is codified in the Colorado statutes, but it's not a, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? It's, it's not, a, it, it doesn't apply every time. It's, it's conditional is the word I'm looking for. It's, it's conditional in every case. And in so that's words, why. I'm working on, I'm a legislator, I'm working on a bill, I'm deliberating on it, and I want to ask some really odd questions. Right. And so those are more protected. This is, this is not that, though. What, what is it that, that you found? Because that's, well, that's the golden nugget. Well, what, they, what I found is that they, they argued about whether or not this was legal. First of all, on March 5th, the president says we're going to allow these plans to be sold. This is Matt Mortier writing an email to several others, and he says, Vince, I believe you're right. We're hard-coded in Section 70, effective date and applicability, that the alignment bill requirements apply to health coverage plans, et cetera, et cetera. So here he's saying the alignment bill keeps it from us. Two weeks later, uh, Vincent Plymel, who's the... And who are these folks? Uh, these are people inside the Division of Insurance. Right. So Matt Mortier, the email I just read, he's a top policy analyst. Vincent Plymel is the uh, communications director. About two weeks later, he says... Uh, he drafts a press release, John. This is incredible. He drafts a press release that says, the extension will require a change in state law, and the Department of Regulatory Agencies will work with the legislature and the governor's office to get the necessary legislation. That right, shows time, you how time convinced. Out. Time yeah. out, because this, this is good stuff. So it's so clear that in order to extend this, to, to say you don't have to, we don't have to comply with Obamacare, it's an obvious violation of the law that the state just passed, that the Department of Insurance had their political flack write up a press release saying, 
we can't, we can't do that. We're going to have to change the law, the law. and we're going to work with the legislature, to, which, by the way, I'm sure they would be able to, to give an extension so that people are not forced into policies they didn't want. There you have it. What happened? Uh, I mean, you know, I asked for these emails and they successfully delayed them for 11 months. And then when I got them again, there was just uh, the, the story was very popular with my readers at CompleteColorado.com. But has anyone from the General Assembly said, ah, this is, you know, you've taken away my powers as a legislator. I, I mean, I think the, the General Assembly, sh Democrat or Republican, should be rightly upset with this. This is taking away their legislative ability when you to, do something to, like this. To, to, to dumb it down to my level, what's happened is the legislature passed a law. Yep. It said, uh, on this date, we, you have to get new insurance. And then the administration, Hicks administration via the Department of, of Insurance basically said, no, don't worry about that. Let's just pretend we didn't pass that law, at least for a year or so, because that's what the president is doing. And nobody called foul. So here you have a governor's administration woefully breaking the law, knowing they're breaking the law because their own guy had a press release ready to roll saying, we can't break the law, we're going to have to change the law, and then something happened, and they broke the law. You'd think that Republicans would jump all over this and go, you broke the law. Somebody ought to, ought to uh, file a charge here or get it investigated or do something. Democrats who are legislators have to think, wait, wait, why am I bothering passing and voting on laws if the administration that's supposed to enforce these laws just goes, mm, let's... Let's pretend. Even after the advice of their own people says, you can't break the law. Right. And this press release, keep in mind when he drafted it, he forwarded it on to some others and he says, are we ready to forward this to the governor's office? Now, it's about three weeks later that the Division of Insurance finally said, oh, hey, we'll just sprinkle this magic dust and make it happen. What happened in between that time? Here's the only documentation we have, John, is we know that about two weeks after this draft press release happened, there was a meeting between the Division of Insurance Commissioner, Marguerite Salazar, and she met with Hick's chief of staff and some other high-powered members of the Hick and Looper staff, uh, of, of Hick and Looper's cabinet. And, you know, barring any other evidence, we have to think right now that that's the meeting where everything turned. And we can't prove that, you can't prove right, that, but, correct. but something happened. The Something Department happened. of Insurance yeah. was ready to do the right thing and follow the law. A meeting happened. The Department of Insurance ignored the law. And for me, there's a second part to the story. Nobody gives a damn. And the idea that nobody gives a damn is troubling. This was a huge get for you on Complete Colorado. Yeah. You know, the Denver Post doesn't touch this, which is odd. You know, the Denver Post doesn't touch a lot of things, but this was something that came up briefly in the gubernatorial campaign. Matter of fact, and correct me if I'm wrong, didn't Bob Beaupre challenge Hickenlooper on this very point about are you breaking the law? And he did it at the debate housed at the Denver Post. It, it, it was during a, 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 a section where the candidates could directly question one another. And Beaupre said, look, I, I, I'm no fan of Obamacare, and I want these people to have the non-ACA compliant plans if they wish, but I'm troubled that you broke the law. It's a law you signed. And as soon as he asked that to the governor, the governor did what, uh, you know, what press people call a pivot, where he goes, pivot. Uh, you know, you, you, you address the question, and then you turn to something that's more productive to talk about. And Hickenlooper did a classic Pivot. So you're right. It did come up. The, the and it came up in the Denver Post auditorium for the debate that the Denver Post was was hosting. The Denver Post didn't follow up on that question. Right. But keep in mind, the reason the Republicans didn't raise a, a ruckus is because they were very happy to go back to their constituents and say, hey, you wanted to keep your plans for another year? Gosh, I, I emailed those people and I said, give them their plans, and now you've got them. So look at the great work that I did. So the Republicans are, they're complicit in this too, in the fact that they should be upset of this, over this, but they were too busy taking credit for something they really didn't deserve that much credit for. I can't help but think <laughs> sooner or later, maybe somebody will notice and file a complaint and go, you know, when, when we break laws, when we ignore laws, there's got to be 
at least some reporting about it. At least you can find it on Complete Colorado. Todd, thank you so much. Thanks for having me on, John. Stay tuned.